More people visit Caesars Entertainment every year than Times Square. But Caesars Entertainment never tries to sell you a product. They sell you the idea of amazing experiences that can never be duplicated anywhere else. Welcome back to Corporate Catalysts, where we look at fascinating stories of the world's most recognizable businesses and the people behind them. When it comes to casinos and resorts in America, the name that has constantly topped the lists is Caesars Entertainment. And this is not a coincidence. Over the years, this big player has faced a lot of battles from warring competitors, tax offices, and even the public. But one cannot talk about Caesars Entertainment without giving credence to its humble beginnings as Harrah's Entertainment. Ever since its acquisition in 2010, the company has undergone a monumental transformation while rebranding itself as Caesars Entertainment Corporation. What has followed is a journey that has been marred by bold expansion efforts, strategic acquisitions, and the glow of success that has lit its towering casinos and resorts across Las Vegas and beyond. But then, as the company recorded multiple successes, it also had to embrace challenges in diverse forms. Indeed, Caesar's name rings bells when casino and entertainment are being discussed. But to talk about the might of Caesar and not talk about its problems will not paint a full picture. So how did Caesar's entertainment come to be? How has it impacted the economy? And what are the challenges that have faced the great establishment head on? As complicated as it may seem, Caesar's history can be split into two journeys. As we'll see, those two journeys eventually converge to form the behemoth that we know today. Let's dive right in. Believe it or not, part of Caesars Entertainment's history can be traced back to Hilton, as in Hilton Hotels. In 1947, Hilton got permission to run what would become the Caribbean Hilton Hotel and Casino in Puerto Rico. This was the company's first job in the gaming business. After them came more casinos in the Caribbean, like the Havana Hilton and the El Panama Hilton. Along with Hilton's other hotels, its foreign division became its own company in 1964. Hilton went back to the gaming business in 1970, when he bought a majority stake in Kirk Kerkorian's International and Flamingo Hotels in Las Vegas. Over time, it acquired 10 casinos, which brought in more than half of the business's income. In 1989 and 1995, Hilton tried to sell itself but failed. Some of the failures were caused by rules about gambling, that would make it hard for a foreign company to buy the business. This made the company think about splitting off its gaming activities. By 1998, Hilton was trying to separate its hotel and gaming businesses again, because it thought that being involved in the very competitive gaming industry was hurting the price of its stock. The need for a merger to give the spin-off a business purpose, so it could be tax-free, slowed down the efforts. Concerns about Hilton's debt level, and differences about price and management, led to the end of talks for a spin-off and the purchase of Circus Circus Enterprises. Hilton finally agreed to split off its casinos into a new public company called Park Place Entertainment. This new company would then buy Grand Casinos, which owned three hotels in Mississippi, right away for $650 million in stock and $550 million in assumed debt. Before the merger, Grand's activities outside of Mississippi, such as managing three Indian casinos, were split off into a different company called Lakes Entertainment, which had 18 casinos. Two years later, Park Place bought Caesars World Casino operators for $3 billion in 2000. Caesars Palace and Caesars Atlantic City were two of the casinos that were part of Caesars World. Caesars Entertainment became the official name of the company on January 6, 2004, after a motion was passed at the annual shareholder meeting in September 2003. CZR was added to the company's ticker name. Making money off of the Caesars brand name was the main reason for the name change, according to the company's leaders. Caesars gave Colony Capital $280 million for the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel and Casino on June 18, 2004. The deal would help Caesars focus on its main casinos on the Las Vegas Strip, a company representative said. Caesars Entertainment was going to be bought by Harrah's Entertainment for more than $5 billion on July 14, 2004. The deal was finalized in 2005. After that, Apollo Global Management, the Blackstone Group, and TPG Capital bought Harrah's and took it private in 2006. Harrah's later changed its name to Caesars Entertainment. Now, Harrah's Entertainment began as a bingo hall in Reno, Nevada on October 29, 1937. It grew by merging with adversaries like Binion's Horseshoe and Caesars Palace. With each merger, the company continued to increase in unique strengths 
to become what is now known as Caesars Entertainment. Today, Caesars Entertainment Inc. boasts 28 gaming brands, including major names like Caesars, Harrah's, Horseshoe, and Bally's. But you see, Caesars Entertainment successes, and growth did not happen overnight. If you will, think of it like the great Roman Empire. It certainly wasn't built in a day. In 2005, Eldorado Resorts made a move that was considered bold. It rescued the struggling Hollywood casino Shreveport in Louisiana from financial woes. They sought to snatch up a 76% stake in the property for $154 million and gave it a fresh identity as the Eldorado Casino Shreveport. Fast forward to 2013, Eldorado decided to shake things up a bit by joining forces with the publicly traded MTR Gaming Group in a reverse merger. Now hear this, that move wasn't just about paperwork. It meant Eldorado was about to inherit three combined racetracks and casinos, commonly known as Racinos, in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, which significantly expanded their gaming domain. The deal closed on September 19th, 2014, birthing the new and improved Eldorado Resorts, Inc. And it was at that point that Gary Carano stepped up as the appointed chairman and CEO. Eldorado growth didn't end there. In November 2015, the company marked another milestone by spreading its wings and acquiring Circus Reno, along with the remaining 50% of Silver Legacy from MGM Resorts International for a whopping $73 million. But Eldorado wasn't done making the news. In May 2017, they scooped up Isle of Capri Casinos for another heart-racing $1.7 billion in cash, stock, and assumed debt. Isn't that just amazing? That move added a dozen more casinos to Eldorado's impressive portfolio. Talk about a high-stakes game. In the summer of 2018, Eldorado was on what couldn't be called anything else but a massive casino shopping spree. First off, they bought the Grand Victoria Casino in Illinois for $328 million. It must have been a good day for the seller, maybe for all the parties involved. And the spending continued. Just a couple of months after the big buy, Eldorado went all in and acquired the operating business of Tropicana Entertainment for $640 million. For lack of a better word, we'll call this jaw-dropping. This move didn't just bring seven new casinos into their ever-growing family. It was the real game-changer. Meanwhile, gaming and leisure properties came into the picture to buy up the real estate of five of these casinos and lease them back to Eldorado for $88 million annually. A rather sweet deal, if you ask me. Oh, and let's not forget the icing on the cake. Eldorado flexed its buying muscle and threw down an extra $246 million to own the real estate beneath Tropicana's Lumiere Place Casino in Missouri. Can you see some strategic moves right there? No, the company wasn't done. In early 2019, Eldorado decided to do something different. They cashed in by selling Presque Isle Downs and Lady Luck Casino Namakalan's operations to Churchill Downs Inc. in a nice $179 million deal. Well, in March 2019, Things started taking a different turn as the casino industry was agog, with rumors that Eldorado and Caesars Entertainment were about to merge. Now wait for it. By June of the same year, Caesars had accepted Eldorado's high-stakes offer of a mind-blowing $18 billion mix of both stock and cash. That is to say that Eldorado, with its 26 assets, decided to join forces with Caesars to gain control over 53 casinos and establishments. It was a move that left other players in the industry both shocked and impressed. Eldorado Resorts then rebranded itself to the prestigious title of Caesars Entertainment, as it had stronger brand power. Caesars Entertainment Inc. is a global gaming powerhouse. It reigns as the largest gaming corporation, boasting 55 casinos across 17 U.S. states. The company didn't stop at that. It also pioneered innovation in casino gaming, tourism, and hospitality. In 2013 alone, it was the fourth largest gambling corporation in the world with annual revenues of $8.6 billion. Among its peers, Caesar stands out with its wide array of amenities, world-class dining, entertainment, shopping, and high-class hotel and convention facilities, as it continues to offer personalized rewards and delightful experiences to every guest and team member. Now that we know the origin of Caesar's entertainment and how much of a big force it is, it's high time we looked into how much of an impact it has on the economy. One reason for this is its large employer capability. As the operator of 55 casinos across 17 U.S. states, Caesars has been a true beacon of hope for job seekers who keep contributing to local economies through the creation of employment opportunities in various sectors, including gaming, hospitality, entertainment, and support services. Needless to say, this continuous employment generation has been a consistent economic booster. Moving forward, 
The acquisition by El Dorado Resorts in 2020 was a transformative event that further influenced the company's economic standing and strategic positioning. Primarily, the move was aimed at revitalizing Caesars Entertainment and infusing new energy into its economic engine. In the same vein, Caesars Entertainment's economy goes beyond its operational boundaries. The company's properties, such as Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, have been magnets for tourists over the years, thus contributing to the economic vitality of the regions they inhabit. The influx of visitors translates into revenue streams for local businesses, as money gets generated from accommodations, dining, entertainment, and retail. Moreover, its lasting success is due to the cultivation of strong brand recognition. The Caesars brand, along with other household names like Caesars Palace, Harrah's, and Horseshoe, has become synonymous with luxury, entertainment, and gaming, which further contributes to the company's appeal. The company cannot survive for long unless it has the backing of loyal customers. That exactly is one of Caesars' backbones. Caesars Entertainment's commitment to customer satisfaction is demonstrated by its innovative customer loyalty programs, a brilliant strategy that keeps attracting and retaining devoted customers. Another technique that lifted Caesars was how it embraced technological innovations. Caesars Entertainment has seamlessly integrated digital advancements into its operations. Some of the company's forward-looking approaches include online platforms and digital initiatives, which were meant to ensure its relevance in an ever-evolving gaming industry. However, just like most great companies, Caesars Entertainment's history has had its not-so-great moments. Let's look at some of them. One of the key chapters in the story of Caesars Entertainment was the substantial debts that Caesars Entertainment was involved in complex financial structures, leveraged transactions, and economic uncertainties placed a strain on the company's financial flexibility. At one point, this burden reached a climax on January 15, 2015, and the result of it was the filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection by Caesars Entertainment. In 2015, Caesars Entertainment's Las Vegas Casino faced an $8 million fine from the U.S. Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network for not properly monitoring transactions for illegal activities. Also, a 2012 IRS examination revealed over 100 unreported incidents involving potential criminal activity, leading to a $1.5 million penalty from the Nevada Gaming Control Board. In the same year, the UK's Gambling Commission criticized Caesars Entertainment for weak money laundering controls at two London casinos. Caesars voluntarily agreed to enhance its anti-money laundering processes paid £875,000 for socially responsible purposes. And the fines, both the widely reported and the silent ones, kept piling while the company kept gasping for air. Fast forward to 2020, Caesars Entertainment EMEA received a record £13 million fine from the UK Gambling Commission for shortcomings related to VIP schemes. These included allowing a customer with signs of gambling addiction to lose £323,000 in a year. Caesars was also penalized for failing to prevent money laundering and neglecting to check the source of funds for a customer who bet £3.5 million in three months, and a politically exposed person, PEP, who lost £795,000 in just over a year. As a result, three senior managers lost their license to operate a gambling business. Problems also included a strategic shift with its acquisition by El Dorado Resorts in 2020. While this move aimed to reshape the company, it indicated the admission of the need to transform in the face of growing industry demands, and of course, the increasing fines and debts. It is at this point imperative to note that the complex nature of the gaming sector, with its reliance on strategic management, made the company susceptible to the consequences of decisions made in the management department. Another chapter that could not be ignored was the global disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. The resulting restrictions, shutdowns, and reduced consumer confidence severely affected the travel, hospitality, and gaming industries. Caesars Entertainment, like its peers, was affected as it grappled with the unprecedented challenges that the pandemic brought with it. In September 2023, Hackers managed to break into Caesars Entertainment System in Las Vegas. They snatched up valuable customer information, like driver's licenses and social security numbers. The aftermath was a plunge in the company's stock, as investors showed their displeasure about the security hiccup. However, Caesar Entertainment's spokesperson said that although the hackers had managed to nab the information, Caesars had actually paid them to delete all the stolen information before they could sell it to other cyber criminals. It is no doubt that the story of Caesars Entertainment, while complex and studded by many challenges, 
is an evolving one. It's an entity that has faced numerous scandals and setbacks. It has shown many times, if anything, that no matter how much life throws at you, they will always position themselves to be that friend to help you escape reality and focus on the good times.